I call this the Omicron Special. Things are weird at the moment. Shenzhen is on high Omicron alert. And thus, in order to go anywhere, you must have a within the last 24 hours negative COVID test. So that means testing every day. Communities will only let you in to go home with a negative result, and the package and why my delivery guys aren't even allowed past the front gate to deliver your stuff. So, how is that gonna affect our friend Luck and Coffee? Let's go find out. It was also weirdly cold for Shenzhen all of last week, so finally getting outside and seeing the sunshine feels pretty great. Oh man, check out that penthouse. Imagine how many Luck and Coffees you can see from up there. It's kind of weird how you can go down one street and it feels like normal life. And then the next street is all COVID reminders. Sometimes things start to feel so COVID-y that you completely forget there's more to the world than quarantine. Look, an airplane! I completely forgot people do that! Oh, right. COVID. <sighs> it's alright, as long as we stay happy forever. I'd planned on taking a bike through some of Shenzhen's amazing separated bike lanes, but I oddly couldn't find a bike until I'd already gotten this far, so I just decided to walk and enjoy some of the scenes I don't normally get to see. I love just staring at apartments and imagining what it would be like if I lived there. I also passed several non-name brand coffee shops along the way. Like I said, more and more coffee every day. You can see why that Lingyi guy said him opening his chain won't put a dent in the market. Like I said, all this business makes me forget about the Omicron situation. Tons of people up and down the streets, nothing seems out in the ordinary, and then suddenly, damn, check out this line to get tested. I always find this kind of funny. Everything is open like normal, but the pharmacy, oh, you're not allowed to go inside, completely blocked off. But you can get your Chinese medicine right up front. Side note about TMC, I've got a sort of love-hate relationship with the stuff. On the one hand, people seem to be willing to just believe that it all works no matter what. It exists, therefore it's great, even when there's either no research or research that even says it's actively terrible for you. But then on the other hand, some people think that it's all completely useless and has no value. Well, I'm not sure that that's the case either. Generally, when something's been around as long as TMC, there's pretty much guaranteed to be at least some value to it. Otherwise, it would have died out and been replaced with something else a long time ago. Google the Lindy effect. Anyway, back on track. I started to realize that I probably waited a bit too long to go out today. China doesn't seem to have the same drink coffee to stay awake culture that the US has. It's just a middle of the day kind of thing. So I guess it's not that surprising that by the time I finally found the Luckin, There was no one in it, though there was also no one in the shopping center, so I can't imagine that it was really Luckin's fault. Although, I gotta say, of every Luckin that I've been to so far, and I'm sure you know that's a lot of them, this was my least favorite. It was bad enough that my girlfriend didn't even want to go inside. She waited outside for me. One of the employees inside was mopping the floor, which was rather surprising though, considering their health code rating. Yuck. That's literally the worst possible rating. For reference, there's only three ratings. Green smile, pleasant smile, and red mm, face. Everything else is a fail. McDonald's, in my experience, always has a green smile. I'm not sure about Starbucks, but I've never seen a Luckin with one of these before. On another note, Luckin doesn't use the same standard app food delivery company that most people use. They use Xunfeng, or SF which is widely considered the best delivery company. Usually they deliver packages, but will also deliver anything you ask for. They're so much better than their competition that when you order a package online, they'll often offer that you can pay extra for them to ship via SF. And this Luckin weirdly had a back room with just SF guys chilling, waiting for orders, which they did get while I was sitting there. This and these new drinks presented by Eileen Gu were all I could film before the employee told me that I couldn't take pictures. This is actually the first time I've ever been told not to film in a Luckin. Granted, I don't think most of them knew that I was filming, so take that with a grain of... film. But I also wonder if it has anything to do with their abysmal health code rating. Sorry, store. Gotta be honest. I ordered one of their new oolong milk tea drinks this time, but I couldn't film, so I took it to go. 
It's been a while since I've had luck in tea, but my conclusion this time is the same as the conclusion last time. Stick to coffee and smoothies. It always feels like if I wanted tea, I should just go somewhere else. Their coffee and smoothie drinks make me actively choose to go to Luckin. And their tea drinks make me go, oh, I should have just gotten a coffee. But I'd do it. For my viewers. On the way back, I figured out where everyone was. They're still in the testing line. Damn, that's a lot of people. But anyway, now that I'm on my way home, there's something that I really want to talk to you guys about. I need the Luckin crowd's thoughts. All you stock twits, perk your ears up and listen carefully. So I've been thinking, hey, check out these dope separated bike lanes. They're completely separated from the traffic so you don't have to worry about dying What? sorry, sorry, got distracted by the city's awesome city planning. So I've been thinking, since we're all so pro luckin and I've got that connection to the Lingy guy with the 11 stores, I reached out to him and asked, holy crap, look at this COVID line. Well, COVID test line, but you get the idea, damn. The way Shenzhen is handling COVID is pretty unique. They try super hard to not have to lock anyone down, but do so as a last resort. So while most people are free to do whatever they want and businesses are free to remain open, you still need that 24 hour code to get in. And then a lot of people don't want to risk getting locked down and not being able to go to work. So tons of people have started either bringing their work computers home or bringing their home to work. And in order to handle testing a city of 12 million people every day, they've opened pop-up labs and recruited... Damn, that's a lot of testers. All so that everything can remain open. Seems to be working pretty well, though. Really don't like to think about the incredible amounts of plastic waste that comes out of it, though. One problem at a time, I guess. But back to the Lingyi guy. You check out the insanity of this line, and I'll tell you my thoughts. I asked him how much it would cost to open a Luckin store. He sent me the link to apply. Their breakdown says 180,000 RMB for remodeling, 190,000 for equipment, and a 50,000 RMB deposit. So that's like $70,000? Hmm, that's a lot. But what if we were to open like a Patreon community Luckin store? We open a location, and then we'd have access to literally everything that everyone wants to know. No more wondering, how do the machines work? Does a number roll over at zero or a hundred? How many orders do they get in a day? It's a franchise. How much fun would it be to have the only foreign-owned branch? And I imagine Luckin wouldn't mind the publicity, but it'd need to be patroning like $3,000 a month for that to be feasible. Hmm. Is that even a reasonable goal? Or is this just a terrible idea? I asked the Lingyi guy about opening in a first tier city. He said, you can't. I pointed out the one that I had already showed you guys in Shenzhen and he said, well, try it. So I went to the application and found he was right. Well, how'd this person get his? Guess I'll have to open ours in my girlfriend's village. Might actually be cooler. <laughs> It'd definitely be interesting. The process of opening a luck and coffee in tier three China. Because there's some things that I just can't find out from looking. Like how many orders they get via delivery. I imagine quite a lot, especially during Omicron times. The way it works right now is Starbucks is still seen as a status thing. People want to be seen at Starbucks. They want the Starbucks experience. But if you're ordering for delivery at home, people just want cheap. And Starbucks is far from that. In fact, they've been raising their prices. Same with Tim Hortons, which I already thought was expensive the last time I was there, which was actually the only time I was there. It's because access to coffee is getting scarcer. Thanks, climate change. But in my experience thus far, my coffee from Luckin has been getting cheaper thanks to all the deals that they always have going on. Really makes me wonder how profitable any one particular store is. Anyway, again, something worth looking into or a terrible idea? Let me know what you think. For the time being, people are going to be ordering a lot more delivery and sitting in store a lot less. Since the city started their testing requirements, I've been having to wait in these lines. Fortunately though, they've been spreading out the testing sites and doing testing for individual communities, so the lines aren't that bad. But there's one thing that's for sure. With all the delivery going on, I wish for luckin to have some luck in Omicron. Let's see what I did there. 
Oh, wait, there's one more thing. A friend of mine started a refractometer business. They found there to just be a huge gap in the market because of all the huge companies that are just coasting on the status quo of massive, inconvenient, proprietary charged, expensive devices. And he wanted to make a small, modern, USB-C, app-connected version. Normally, I hate things that have their own app just for the sake of having an app, but this is the kind of device that really needs it. So that's exactly what he did. Not only is it smaller, cheaper, and more accurate, but the companion app can also process data and display it in a more readable fashion that would have been really useful when I bought one to do my kombucha stuff. Refer to this other video if you're interested in that. So he gave me one to try it out, and obviously I immediately ordered a Luckin' Coffee. And the results were... interesting. I don't know the dose or the water amount, so I couldn't really calibrate it that well. But according to the results, this is a weak coffee. Interesting. I brewed my own coffee for comparison and got strong and bitter. Hmm. Do I just suck at brewing coffee? I'll have to work on my skills. Er, you know, maybe I should just open a patron-funded Luckin' store. That's why I opened this Luck in China tier. Or if you really want to make it a reality, you can subscribe to the Lililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililililil